Hey guys, so I've been using my 2019 i9 MacBook Pro for the past few months, and I gotta say, I really like it. It's working well. The keyboard's still holding up. Fingers crossed it holds up. But there is one issue that you guys need to be aware of. I've been using this fix for the last few months. I'm very happy with it. I'm gonna let you know what the situation is. Now, there is one problem with these 2019 i9 MacBook Pros, and that is the battery and the power levels are coming into it. So it only has an 87 watt charger. What that means is the i9 CPUs, they can ask for like 100 watts of power on demand at any moment. So check it out, this is Synbench. Let's hit that CPU test and look at the wattage over here. At the beginning, it shoots up 100 watts of power. It just drains it straight away, hits its thermal limits straight away. And as you can see the performance wise, it shot up to four gigahertz, dropped down because it got too hot. Look at that, it got to nine, it got to 100 because it spiked up to 100 watts, demanded way too much, and then it dropped down to normal levels. Secondly, this, this level, of 60 watts to 55 watts. If you're using the GPU on top of that, it's gonna start draining the battery as well. What that means is you're gonna be constantly dipping into your battery plus the 87 watts just to get enough charge to get this CPU to perform for what it asks for performing. So what I found when I use my intensive heavy workflows, I do a lot of video encoding, I do a lot of programming, I do lots of video editing, I do lots of, I do too much for the system, so I'm constantly hitting it hard. So what I found is that the battery life is completely getting hammered. I've used up loads of cycles in the first week, just using too much. So initially I left my laptop encoding videos overnight. And as you can see, look at that drainage all the way down to 5%, then it shoots up goes down again, shoots up, and it goes down again and shoots up. But I'm gonna break down the fix, and this fix is for advanced users only. This fix is for advanced users only. If you're not an advanced user, just get Apple Care, and when the battery gets drained, Apple will replace your battery for you and you're good to go. But if you don't like fan noise and you wanna get the best performance, watt ratio, all that kind of goodness, this is the guide for you, and it involves using an app called Voltage Shift. And this is a free app I'll show you exactly how to use it. You've got to use some terminal command lines. If you guys want a graphical user interface, maybe I can program one up for you. Let me know in the comment section below. All right, so by default, we've seen that the CPU can demand up to 100 watts of power. Now I'm using Voltage Shift and I've written some scripts to handle it for me. So I'm gonna use something called Low Power. So this script, it will limit my secondary power limit to 27 watts and it involves this command. I'll explain exactly how to do it shortly, but let me just show you this guy working. So let me fire up that Synbench again. I'm gonna hit run and look at Intel Power Gadget. Look how much power. It only maxes out to 60 watts now. Now because it's only maxing out at 60 watts, look at it, it's no longer overheating. It's only at 88, 89 degrees at the moment. It's not shooting up to 100 degrees anymore. It's hit that ceiling of 60 watts and it's hitting that max power for a very long time. It's not spiking up and then dropping down like before, hitting it for a very long time and then it reduces it for a very long time, keeps on going to 50, and you can see the temperature of the CPU. It got through the entire Synbench experiment at only 85 degrees centigrade. So look at that amazingness. We hit the maximum wattage demand of 60 watts, and then it dropped it down to 50, and then if I ran this for longer, it will drop it down again to 27 watts. And we still got a pretty high score of Synbench, considering that I'm frigging using Final Cut Pro at this very moment. So it doesn't actually reduce the power of this amazing computer, but it does allow you to have a nice, solid, amazing experience. So let me just show you this again. This script in itself does this magical hexadecimal code, very complicated to do. I'll explain how it works and I'll show you where I got the guide from. But this guy uses two turbo power limits. It sets the maximum to 60 watts and it sets the long-term turbo to 27 watts and I find this is amazing for my i9 MacBook Pro. Keeps it cool, quiet, and amazing. Now guys, if you're not an advanced user and you're just looking for something basic to use to get yourself going, don't do this method. There's a free app called Turbo Boost Switcher. Type into Google, it's the number one on the list right there. I can actually hit Disable Turbo Boost. Type in your password. It will now disable Turbo Boost, which will make my CPU run at 2.2 gigahertz. And it pretty much helps you regulate the speed of your Mac. All it does 
when you enable Turbo Boost Switcher, it disables the Turbo Boost operation, and that is the culprit for asking for all the extra power and juice. It will make your computer run slower, but for those moments when you want peace and quiet and you don't want to kill your battery, you can enable it and live your life and be happy. Secondly, there is a paid app. It's not again as good as the advanced guide I'm going to give you right now. It's called Volta. It costs about $5. It does most of the job. All right, so on Google, hit Volta, and then realize it's not Alessandro Volta you want. You want Volta, Mac, the top link at the top by GaryMatthews.com. Go there, hit try and download, and it'll go ahead and download it, but don't stop there because you need to also check out the instructions. So you need to restart your Mac while holding down Command-R, and then in Terminal Utilities, you wanna type in CSR enable without kext, and then that will enable Volta to actually work. And don't worry, I'll be going over this method when I show you how to use Volta Shift, because you also need to play around with SIP. Now, when you launch Volta, you'll get an end user license agreement. Pretty much just says you can use this software for free for seven days. And then after that, you need to pay for it. $5, it's worth it. The dude spent his time and effort not flipping burgers in McDonald's where he could have even paid more than that to give you the software, so it's worthwhile. Anyway, look at it. You get a nice, beautiful graphical user interface Undervolt doesn't work on Max, skip that. The power limit is what you want to play with, and it goes from auto all the way down to setting the power limit. Now, the good thing about this method is that you can control the amount of turbo. So, for example, we can set 60 watts as our max, but unfortunately, 60 watts is not good enough for all of our tasks. For example, Max with Vega GPUs inside, they use another 50 watts on top of that. So 50 plus 60 is 110. You know, plus the screen and all that stuff, you're gonna be eating into that battery because the power supply only gives you 87 watts, okay? So that's not good enough. However, in this guide, I'm using an app called Voltage Shift and it's free and open source. I love that stuff, great. And what it allows you to do is fully configure the turbo modes of your CPU. So on your CPU, it's got three levels of operation. One is the base frequency. So the base clock of this guy is 2.3 gigahertz. When it's running 2.3 gigahertz, it's not eating up that much power, no fan noise, everything is good in the world. Then it has a turbo super boost mode in which it asks for about 100 to 125 watts of power. And this is great, for example, when you launch an application that has a really tiny amount of operations to be done, it does it super quick and you're happy with the world. And it constantly dips and eats into the power. So after about 10 seconds of it super turboing, it dips the frequency to around 3 gigahertz or 3.3 gigahertz, depending on what you're doing. And that is the turbo boost frequency that I want to modulate. So I don't want it to go all the way down to 2.3 gigahertz because that's a bit too slow. And I don't want it to be using 3.3 gigahertz because it asks for about 65 watts of power plus the GPU is asking for power, your monitor is asking for power, it eats up too much into the 87 watt limit and we end up dipping into the battery long term, which means if I leave my computer encoding a video overnight, I'll wake up the next day and the battery is drained dead. Now this is a problem with Mac, I've submitted it to Apple, they don't wanna fix it, it's just a problem with i9s and it also happens on Windows, check my other video for the fix on that. So what Voltage Shift allows you to do, and it is technical, it allows you to set both the maximum turbo frequency, the middle turbo frequency, and that's, yeah, that's pretty much it, the maximum and the turbo frequency. And that means if I'm doing any long operations, it's not gonna make the fans go crazy and it's not gonna drain into the battery, but it will still give me a nice performance boost over the 23 watt limit of the 2.3 gigahertz that it comes out of the box. So, hope you enjoyed the guide. Again, this one is for advanced users only, so buyer beware, all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna get pretty technical about it. There's lots of numerical code you need to memorize hex, a decimal, and all that kind of stuff, but I hope you enjoyed the show and enjoy it. All right, so type Voltage Shift into Google and it's the top link right there. Now this project actually contains all the source code for Voltage Shift and you can actually compile and build this all yourself. If you wanna know how to do that, let me know in the comment section below and I'll post a how-to guide on my coding channel, Xcreate. However, for now, what we're gonna do is just get it running with the pre-compiled version that they supply. So in the middle of the page, it says you can download this software's binary from Voltage Shift. Click on that, you get to this page, you click on that, and it's gonna go ahead and launch Google Drive, where you can actually download a pre-compiled version of this app. Now, of course, I prefer compiling this all myself, but I'm just gonna show you the pre-compiled version, because it's easy to use. Now, 
Once it's downloaded, you just extract that zip. Everyone knows how to do that. Perfect. So we've got this new folder called Voltage Shift, and I've downloaded it to my desktop. So over in Terminal, you right-click on Terminal, or you press Command Space, type in Terminal, and you'll get a window like this. You type in CD Space, you drag that folder in, and it gives you the whole path. You enter, and there you go. You're inside ls-l. That just shows you the contents of the directory. You've got two files. You've got the kext, which is the driver, and you've got voltage shift right there. Now, before we can run voltage shift, you need to do two things. Now, the first thing you need to do is disable system integrity protection for kexts. And kexts are drivers in the world of Mac. So you need to restart your system into recovery mode, Go into Terminal, Utilities, and type in this command to enable system integrity protection for everything other than KECTS. Now don't worry, this is completely reversible because if you just reset your PRAM, Alt, Command, P and R, it will go ahead and re-enable SIP automatically. And the second thing you need to do is, is you need to set the appropriate permission. So there's a line here hidden away in a text and it says you need to give the permission of root. Root means the top premier admin level. So it's going to give you complete access to your computer by running this command. And this, of course, isn't the command you need to run, but you need to run part of it. So you copy the first part there, you paste it in, and then you type in vol, press tab to complete it, type in dot, press tab again, complete it, and now you've got voltage shift kext. Enter. That's going to go ahead and give root permission to that kext. So now we've got two files, and you can see that one of them has got root, and the other one is staff level. So I'm going to type in voltage shift to see if it works. As you can see, something appeared on the screen. Perfect. I'm going to type in voltage shift info, and again, all of these parameters appeared on the screen. So right now my CPU is this, that, and the other, and if you go ahead and look through this, it's going to have all of these different parameters you can use for voltage shift, including undervolting, changing your GP, all that stuff. I've tested this stuff out. It doesn't actually work on the latest Max, unfortunately, but you can set the TPD, and that's what we're going to be doing right now. And to do that, it is complicated, but again, I'll talk you through this step by step. So first, what you want to do is type in this command, voltage shift space read, space 0x610. That's going to tell you your current setting, this crazy number right there. So I'm going to break this number down to you. So it's 0x, and then it's three digits. And then this one here is the magic number, 3e8. And then it's another two digits. And then this one here is another magic number, dd. And then it's an eight. And then this last three digits are magic numbers. So this one, 3E8, actually means 1,000. Now, 1,000 divided by 8 is 125. So this number right here means that our short turbo boost is 125 watts. This number right here. Zero, zero, I don't know what that does. But what that relates to is the power limit time. It's how long it's going to allow you to use 125 watts. And DD stands for 28 seconds, OK? You just have to trust me on this one. The last one is the CPU power limit. And that is 320. So look at 320, hit convert. That's going to come to 800. So 800 divided by 8 is 100. So the normal CPU limit is 100 watts. And a turbo boost CPU limit is 125 watts. Confusing, right? But again, don't worry too much because when you restart your system, it's going to reset the values back to zero. So worst case, if you make a mess of it, you can just turn your computer off and on again and restart it back to the initial values of, in my case, 125 and 100. So I'm going to just show you my settings. So low power, I've got this hex. And let's work through what I've done together. So 438, we know that one already. 1E0, that one's new. 00, zero we know that. DD, we know that's still the same. 8, that's still the same. And we've got 0, 3, 8. So 1E0, what does that mean? 1E0. 
that comes up to 480. 480 divided by eight equals 60 watts. That means my maximum power limit is gonna be 60 watts because I put that value in. As you can see, I've kept the 28 seconds as normal, kept all the other values the same, but the last one over here, zero C8, zero C8, that one is 200. 200 divided by eight equals 25 watts. So this setting is gonna set my CPU limit to 25 watts and my turbo boost limit to 60 watts, which means long term, I'm gonna be using 25 watts, but short term, I'm gonna be using 60 watts. So just say now, you want your CPU to go 30. 30 watts. You times 30 by eight, which comes up with 240. 240, you convert it to hex, which is F0. So now instead of zero D8, you put F0 in there, and now your CPU power limit is gonna be 30 watts. You know what, you know what? I've probably lost a lot of you guys because we're just looking at numbers here. If you understood what I was cooking, you probably understand what's going on and you can probably do these scripts and all that stuff yourselves. I'm just gonna stop right here because I feel like I'm just getting a bit too advanced and I don't want you guys out there to follow this guide and make a mess of things on your system. If you guys want some more information, just leave a comment in the comment section below and I can gladly expand on this. Maybe I'll give another crack, I'll get a whiteboard out or whatever, or maybe I'll make a, a GUI for this, an app to help you out with this situation. But basically it is possible to set your power limits for your CPU and when you do, you have a lot cooler experience on your Mac. Previously on my 2018 MacBook Pro, my keyboard was a wreck and I have heard a lot of people saying that the keys probably get damaged a lot quicker because the CPU is always overheating. And I've been using this method on my, my 2019 MacBook Pro. It's been running cooler. Haven't had any problems with the keyboard yet, touch wood. So maybe it is a long-term beneficiary. I'll let you know how I evolve with this system going forward, but I've been using this honestly since week two of this system because my battery was getting wrecked. But I'm gonna stop right here. If you wanna know more, just let me know in the comment section below. But if you kind of understood where I was going and how it works, then you can probably, you probably know how to do it by now because I've given you more than enough information. All right, yeah, yeah, it's just getting too complicated. I just didn't want to risk anyone out there doing something a bit dodgy with their system, especially because you're giving root privileges to this application. And if you start giving things root privileges, it can start messing up your system. The good thing about this, of course, is every single time you restart your system, it resets the values. And if you reset your PRAM, it clears out your CSR util. So it disables system, so it enables system integrity again. All right, back to the show. All right, so that's it. That's how I tamed my i9 beast. Honestly, I hope you guys learned something today. For me, this stuff was mind blowing and the fact that it's free and open source. Guys, go over to GitHub, give a thank you to the developer. Keep that guy motivated because when the next Mac comes out, you're gonna want it to be supported, wouldn't you? Yeah, you do. That's it, any questions, leave a comment in the comment section below and I hope you enjoyed the show.